Hello, my name is Tyron McGrath. I'll be covering the campaigns area within the marketing module of CRM today in this video. Okay, so I'm within Iron Group's deployment of CRM Online and I've browsed to the marketing main folder and then also the subfolder for campaigns. And this is the area where you'll be driving all your campaigns from within CRM. Now today I'm going to be using the example of trying to communicate with our potential clients about a, a launch event for CRM 2011. So to do this, I've gone to the campaign subfolder and in the ribbon at the top I can click on new. Okay, so I've opened up a blank campaign record and I can start filling information in about the campaign. Uh, this is an area where you can store all the planning activities, all the different activities that need to be done before you can um, in fact run this campaign. Um, and of course, campaigns aren't always just one communication initiative. Sometimes you'd need to run a number of those. So this is really where you'd store all of those different communication activities from within. So you can, and in, in fact, you're not just run, uh, you're not just storing these initiatives. You're also running them from within this record as well. So this is where I'd run um, my email invites to uh, this 2011 launch event. This is where I can also send um, maybe certain clients don't have email or they don't wish to receive email. We can also send post or mail merge. Different uh, communication activities can be run from within here. So I'm going to fill in um, information on this record such as uh, the name of the, the overall campaign. So this will be CRM 2011 launch event. You can get, store other useful information within this area, such as a keynote speaker, um, so the main person that will be speaking, um, if that's the type of campaign that you'll be running. You can also give it a unique code, um, the status reason, so um, at first you can say it's proposed. Uh, and then there's also other out-of-box fields as well that you can uh, store useful information about. The offer field is quite interesting, so if we just um, fill in this field, so um, you, this is by the way, this is what will be pulled into the email activities, the communication activities that you'll be running. Okay, so I'm going to fill in the offer um, area. You can also give it a proposed begin date and an actual begin date, and then you can start to report on those types of things. You know, how much lag is uh, really happening there. Uh, and also a description as well. Okay, and then also below here we can store other useful information as well about the campaign that we're running. Right, so I'm going to go and save without closing this record. Um, to do, the reason why I'm doing this is to unlock the left hand nav bar. And this is where we can start to run all the different activities that you'd need for the completion of this campaign. And it can all be stored within this one central record. Okay, so now the left hand nav bar is unlocked, I'm going to go to the planning activities area. These are the activities that need to be completed for the campaign to be run successfully. So they're not just the communication initiatives that we need to run and the activities around that, but they're also the, the things that we need to have completed and prepared. Um, for example, if, you're, you've, you, if you have to book a venue, then it, you can have that activity based within here. So book a venue could be one activity that you'd want to put in here. I'm going to put in uh, a new activity to to create the list of people that I would like to uh, invite to this event. So to do so, just use the toolbar at the top to add new activity. Click on Tasks. Now remember, if you've got Outlook plugin um, connected, then these will connect back into your tasks within Outlook. So create Invite List. I can give it a due date as well. I'm going to say that needs to be done today by the close of play. And let's just save and close that. So now I've got that task and it will link back into my Outlook if I've got that plugin installed. Okay, so now what we need to do is we, we imagine that I've created that marketing list and we need to now add that marketing list in. So first of all, I can say that this activity has been completed. So let's go into that activity. We'll just imagine that I've created that marketing list and I can mark this as complete. Then let's go into the target marketing list area. This is an essential part of running a campaign. You need to add a, a marketing list to a campaign so that the campaign knows who to distribute the communication activities to. So to do so, just use the ribbon at the top to add existing marketing list. And then let's just use a, a list that I've created um, previously. 
so Leeds within the UK. This option here is just um, asking me if I want to add that marketing list to any undistributed campaign activities in the current campaign. I don't have any as of yet, so it doesn't really make any difference, but I'm going to just click OK to that. So now we've got that marketing list associated with that campaign, you can see that here. The next thing to do is uh, start creating those communication activities and to do that you go to the campaigns activities area. So to create a new activity just go to the toolbar at the top and select add new campaign activity. A blank form will open for us to then um, fill in information about this activity. So for in this example here within the channel area I would like to send an email. So that's for the invite. The type you have lots of different types that we can use out of the box. I'm going to just say this is direct initial contact. Uh, the subject is uh, email invite to 2011 launch event. I can give it more information within here and I can also store other inf useful information within the fields below. I think that's enough for me to, to go on for now. So I'm just going to select save at the top left in the, in the ribbon without closing it. The reason for this is that it unlocks the ribbon at the top for me to in fact select this option here which is distribute campaign activity. So when I select this, based upon what channel I'd selected in the drop down, it's going to open up a blank form for me to fill in. Now you can see here that it's pulled the offer field from the actual original campaign record into the contents of the email which is quite useful and then we can build up this email. So I'm going to do that now. You can see here that the two fields etc have been blanked out because it's, it doesn't need those because it's based on the marketing list. We do need to give it a subject so and we can add more information within the, the body of the, the email and we can use the different options available to us. So I'm going to just use that for now and then if we would like to distribute that, that campaign and we're, we're happy with what we've created I can just select distribute and then what will happen is it will distribute those emails to all the different people within that marketing list. Now when you begin to start receiving responses, I'm just going to save and close this uh, activity now. Uh, when you begin to receive campaign responses, you can store those responses within the campaign responses area within the original campaign record. This is useful so that we can keep track of all the people that have replied to us to say that they'll be attending this event. So just go, click on the campaign responses and let's imagine that someone's emailed back to say that they're interested uh, in attending. We can just click on the add new campaign response in the ribbon at the top here. And then we can store the information about who's responded to us. And so we have lots of different useful fields, but the main fields that we're really interested in is the customer field. So if we know that the customer, which we should do because they should be attached to that marketing list that we sent out, we can then search for that customer using the lookup here. So let's say Andrew Burgess had emailed back to say that they'd like to attend. And we can store other information about uh, this campaign uh, response. Now, the more information that you store about this response, we can always convert these campaign responses just like we can convert leads. So we can in fact convert these into an account or a contact if required. What we also need to do is fill in the subject field. So uh, let's just say Andrew would like to attend the event. And let's just save this so we can see what convert campaign response does. So if I select this option here, you can see that we have a, a similar form that opens up when we convert a lead. Okay, I'm going to cancel out of there and close down this record and you can see all the responses are held within the campaign responses area. Okay, so that really concludes uh, running campaigns from within CRM and I've shown you a small area of how to do that with an example of uh, sending out invites via email. So I strongly recommend that you have a little play around with the different options available to you within this area um, and just get a feel for, for how CRM handles campaigns.